flying disc has been with us for more than 30 years. Simple game of throw and catch has multiplied into dozens of great games, including Ultimate, the team game where you score by completing a pass into the end zone. Freestyle, where players show off their most creative and difficult moves before catching the disc. Maximum time aloft, where you try to keep the disc in the air as long as possible before catching it with one hand. But the most popular disc sport today is disc golf. Hi, I'm John House. One of the things that I love about disc golf, you don't have to catch it. All you do is throw. The rules are very similar to those of ball golf. Start at the first tee and throw. Wherever your disc stops, put your foot on that spot and throw again until you reach the hole. The hole might be a tree, a lamp post, or even a garbage can. But if you're lucky, your course will have official disc hole hole. To finish the hole, you just cut your disc into the basket. Record your score, and it's on to the next tee. Some courses may have out-of-bounds areas. Streets, parking lots, creeks, and lakes are almost always out of bounds. If you throw out of bounds, you take a one-stroke penalty and play from where your disc was last in bounds. Obviously, you'll want to finish the hole in the fewest number of strokes possible. Like ball golf, courses are usually 9 or 18 holes. Total your strokes for all the holes, and you'll have your final score. That's it. No clubs, no balls, clean shoes, just this. If you've ever played regular ball golf, you know that the trees are generally on the edges of the fairway. In disc golf, they're usually in the middle of the fairway. You can curve around the trees. You can go between the trees. Or you can even go over the tree. If you have to go under something, you can skip your disc or roll it. A great variety of possible shots is part of what makes this golf so much fun. Advanced players may carry as many as 10 or more different types of discs. Of course, when you start out, you'll need at least one and more likely two discs to begin play. As you improve, you'll find the need for more specialized discs. Discs vary in the size, the weight, and the shape. And you'll choose your disc based on the type of shot and the distance to the hole. This is a Pluto platter, the first Frisbee disc made by Whammo in the 50s. Over the years, the discs got bigger and bigger. Then came the first disc made especially for disc golf. The same size and shape, it was made much denser to increase its weight. Discs began to get smaller again, with the big breakthrough coming in 1983, the introduction of the first bevel edge disc. As you can see, the rim is triangular rather than blunt. As bevel edge discs developed, they became flatter and more pointed. They fly a lot farther than the old disc, and they handle a lot better in the wind. Most holes in disc golf are between 250 and 350 feet. As in ball golf, there are drives, throat shots, and putts. You'll use a different type of disc or a different throwing style for each of these shots. The first shot you should learn is the approach shot. If you can make a good, accurate approach shot, you can save yourself from a bad drive, and you'll never have to make a long putt. Approach discs are generally taller and more round than drivers, and may even have approach or putt and approach marked right on them. These discs fly straight and slow, which is necessary for a good approach shot. 
Your goal will be to put the disc right next to the pole. The disc will generally skip or curl to the left after it hits the ground, so you want your shot to land just short and to the right of the pin. Pick out a spot, keep that spot in mind. If you're left-handed, pick out a spot to the left. Start about 100 feet from the hole. Turn sideways so that your feet and your shoulders are lined up with your flight path. These three fingers on the rim, put your index finger where it's comfortable. Take a step, bring your arm through, nice and smooth, snap your wrist, there it is. Once you're consistent from 100 feet, you can put the disc right up to the hole every time, back up to 150 feet. When you've got that mastered, go to 200 feet. When you can throw 200 feet accurately, you can reach almost any hole on the course in two shots. Disc golf is an accuracy game, not just a distance game. The biggest mistake that most people make when they're starting out is they try to throw too hard. They want to throw 350 feet like the pros, and they wind up all over the course. They're in the water, they're behind the trees, and they're taking fours and fives on holes when they should be getting easy threes. Distance will come with time and practice. For now, if you can master the 200-foot approach shot, you'll be a winner. There are as many different putting styles as there are people who play disc golf. The one rule that applies regardless of style is that you may not fall forward after you putt. The key to successful putting is to be consistent and comfortable. If it works for you, that's what counts. To start, make sure you've got the right disc. Putters are generally taller and more round than drivers. You may use the same disc you used for approach shots. That's not uncommon. Putters are often more rubbery, too, so that they stick in the chains of the pole hole. As far as developing your own putting style, there are three things to remember. If you're right-handed, the disc will curl to the left a little when it hits the chain, so you want to hit a little to the right of the pole. Second, if you keep the disc flat, you won't have to adjust much to varying wind conditions. Third, you'll want to putt a little high, so that the disc drops as it reaches the basket. That way, if you miss, you won't go too far past the hole. New players lose a lot of strokes by two putting and three putting. Don't get upset if you miss a 50 foot putt. It's not realistic to expect to make those yet. And don't be afraid to just lay it up close to the basket. Play smart and know your limits. The game is won by taking the fewest strokes, not by making the prettiest shot. Throwing a long, curving drive that flies between the trees and right up to the basket for a birdie is one of the most satisfying experiences in disc golf. It takes a while to learn how to do that. For now, if you're playing a hole that's between 300 and 400 feet, your goal should be to get a three on that hole. Let me repeat, there's nothing wrong with throwing a nice, easy 200-foot approach shot off the tee. With time and practice, you'll learn to throw farther. And when you do, you'll be making twos on some of those holes. Move to a nice open field. When you practice your drives, you need to do it in a place where there are no trees so you can concentrate on your technique rather than your score. Out here, you can throw 18 drives in 10 minutes. Out on the course during a round, you'll only throw 18 drives in an hour and a half. There are four easy steps to drawing longer drives. First, get the right fit. You need a driver that's recommended for all skill levels. The pros will use a driver that you'll find hard to control. Your driver should be one that flies straight or even curves to the right. That information will be on the package or in the score display. Make sure the disc is not too heavy. The biggest myth in disc golf is that heavier is better. Your disc should weigh no more than 173 grams. Most of you starting out will do better with a disc in the 160s or even in the 140s. Second is your throwing angle. What you want is a low line drive, like you're sliding the disc across the table. 
keep your nose nice and flat. If the nose gets too high, the disc will stall and fall to the left. If you find that your shots curve too much to the left every time, put a little right curve angle on it, still keeping the nose down. Release a little higher, follow through a little lower. If your shots go to the right every time, put a little left curve angle on it. This time your release is a little lower and your follow through is high. The third step is your footwork. One short step is plenty on an approach shot, but putting more body into it will help your drive. A three-step approach like this will give you a lot of extra distance. It's right, left, right, and throw, and we call this the X step because the left leg crosses behind the right to form an X. Right, left, right, and throw. Keep it nice and smooth because if you get your footwork right, but you lose your nice smooth stroke, you won't be any better off. And don't step and throw at the same time. Right, left, right, throw. Fourth step is snap. Think of your arm as a whip. You want to really accelerate through your throw and really pop it at the release. To do this, we use our shoulder, stay nice and loose. Make sure your arm is loose, make sure your shoulder is loose. Reach back, turn away from your target a little bit, and come through. Once you're comfortable with that, you can reach back a little more, turn your shoulder a little more, but take it one step at a time. Make sure you're comfortable with what you're doing before you move on to the next step. Practice these steps and you'll see your drives improve dramatically and your scores go down. When you're comfortable driving 300 feet, you have a reliable 200-foot approach shot, you consistently putt for par, and you're ready for the next step. My video, Inside Tips for Winning Disc Golf. Here's an example that'll help you develop longer drives. This is your basic grip for approach shot. For a better driving grip, put your index finger on the rim here with the other three. You'll find that you get a lot more snap be a little hard to control at first, but once you get used to it, the results will be dramatic. Now go play some disc golf and have fun.